You know, when you're working on one of these LED strips, sooner or later you're going to end up with a half a strip left over and you may want to add some lighting to an, another area. So what you have to do then is you have to uh, cut into this and splice it. And there are two methods to make a waterproof LED strip. One is to directly solder a set of wires right onto the LED strip, right onto the pads. And the other one is to use a purposely made uh, connector that snaps on over the strip. Now neither one of these are really 100% waterproof. So what I like to do is add a little bit of a heat shrink to it and maybe put a little bit of a liquid tape around it. And on this one too, I like to put a little liquid tape around. You have to get the right connector for this one. For example, you can buy connectors that are insulation displacement for waterproof strips. You need a different connector if you have a non-waterproof strip, which is kind of a contact slide under style. Also, these strips, if they're a 50-50 LED, they're usually 10 millimeter wide. And if they're a 35-28 strip, they're usually 8 millimeter wide. And then you're going to have to buy the matching connector, either a 2-wire or 4-wire, or in some cases a 5-wire if you have an RGBW. There's maybe 20 different possibilities of connectors that you may have to buy. And the problem is, when you look online, they don't always tell you what type of connector it is, so you could end up buying two or three of them before you find one that will fit. So for that reason, I kind of like using the uh, solder method here. And as well, it makes for a little more low profile uh, strip. So whenever possible, I prefer this one. Now the one time that I have found where this don't work very good is in this situation where you have, say, a connector on it. Well, doing this and all this all day long, I found that I have a fairly high failure rate of the pads ripping out. So this is maybe not as good for situations where the strip's got to move around a little bit. This strip is going to have a little more support around the junction here. And you know, you can do this kind of all day long without having any problem with it. When you look at these strips, you'll see every about three inches, you'll have a little spot where it typically it has a little icon with a pair of scissors and you can also tell because you can see these little copper traces here you want to cut along that little icon of the scissors. Now we have the cutoff end here and what we want to do is we're going to want to take our X-Acto knife and just cut about here but we don't want to cut all the way down into the bottom side so it takes a little finessing but just kind of Get as much as you can without going too deep. And then sometimes you can just kind of pull it back like that. So now you can see how I'm getting it here. And try not to scrape it any more than you have to because you could, you could uh, take the copper off too. And I think I pretty much got it there. Now we'll try to tin it and solder it. And to do that, it's awful difficult to hold these things. So I get a little piece of metal with a little rubber band around it. And what I want to do is I want to tin these four copper traces with my soldering pencil. And you got to be a little careful. You don't want to get too much on here. You don't want to get a big glob on it. All right, and then we want to do the same thing with our wire. We want to cut the ends of the wire off so that just a small amount is exposed. So here we've got the four pieces of wire exposed and we got to go black, green, red, and blue. And essentially what we do is we just, and I'm going to move this back just a bit, like that, because I'm going to be pushing down. So we'll start off with the black, and just kind of push this down into that tin wire and hold it until it, until it cools down. Then we'll do the green. And 
finally the blue. There we go. And that's basically how you solder a new end to an LED strip. And then what I like to do is use this stuff called liquid tape. And it's kind of gooey. But then run this liquid tape over the wires as well as the exposed part of the LED strip. And so either you want to put some kind of something down here when you do this. There we go. And we can get this liquid tape in different colors. So we've had this drying for about a half hour. It's a little bit tacky, but it's not enough that it's going to get a bunch of goo all over the place. So now we're going to put a piece of heat shrink on it. Put it over the, uh, the strip. And the heat shrink normally has a 2 to 1 shrink ratio, which means it shrinks to half its size. Now, you're going to lose the last LED, but it doesn't really matter. And then I have my nice Dremel uh, heat pencil. And then all we do is heat the heat shrink. And the nice thing about this pencil is it doesn't put out so much heat that you might burn it. But you can use a lighter. So now we should test it just to make sure that it works. And that's how you make a waterproof connection to a LED strip. And this is an example of an insulation displacement connector. And you can maybe see there's prongs right here that actually what they do is they pierce the bottom of the strip from the underside. And this is an example of a non-waterproof connector. And with this, they're actually little fingers that stick out. And the way these work is the LED strip actually slides underneath those four little contacts. So it really depends on whether you have a waterproof or non-waterproof LED strip on which one of these two types of connectors that you're going to use. And so to terminate the strip, you want to lay the strip over, not slide into, but lay it over these pins, press down a little bit, and then close this cover with the assistance of a set of pliers. Squeeze it really good with the pliers. And that should make a nice secure connection. And we can verify that by opening the strip. And if you will have a hard time seeing this, but I can see where each of those little tabs have pierced the copper traces. So this strip actually is, is ready to go. And again, I like to usually put a little bit of, you know, goop around here, like some liquid tape or whatever, to just help uh, waterproof it a little bit more. And unfortunately, I found some issues with these insulation displacement type connectors. And I have a high failure rate. Sometimes it takes two or three attempts, and sometimes it takes more. And of course, each time you do that, you got to cut off another couple inches. So what I've started doing is stripping back part of the silicone like I do when I'm just putting the pigtails on and then actually soldering the two points. And then when I'm done, I waterproof it by putting some conformal coating here or some liquid tape or something like that to kind of give it a little bit of a strength in here so we don't snap this off. And then close the cover. And that really, if you've got to use these, this may be the best approach.